I needed way more aluminium ingots to be able to cast some of the larger parts. We had an old broken ladder in the shed which my brother is helping me chop up. I really need a proper workbench. Kind of all went a bit tits up, but this is the plan with the core. Here is the part I want to make, a hollow aluminium sphere. So firstly I made a two part pattern of the sphere to 3D print, split down the middle. Notice a sticky out bit of tube, this is what the core sits in. The first half of the pattern is rammed up in the casting sand. Then the second half of the pattern is added and the top of the flask is rammed up. The flask is opened and the pattern removed, leaving a void in the sand. Next, the mould for the sand core is assembled and filled with core sand which then sets to make the core. The core is removed from the mould and placed into position in the flask. This leaves a nice void to fill with the molten metal. Molten aluminium is poured in and the flask opened to reveal the final part. Finally the core is dug out of the part and there we have a hollow aluminium sphere. Easy eh? The core is made from normal silica sand mixed with sodium silicate. In this instance, I tried seeing if I could get away with standard builder's sand from the hardware store as the core didn't need to have a particularly smooth surface finish. Unfortunately, I bought the wrong binding agent for the sand. This is core glue, which is used to glue multi-part cores together. What I actually should have bought is sodium silicate liquid. I persevered anyway to see if the core glue would still work. When mixed with the core glue, the sand was quite sticky and didn't go easily into the mould. Sodium silicate hardens in the presence of carbon dioxide. The core glue is sodium silicate based, so here I'm trying to generate CO2 by adding bicarbonate of soda to vinegar. This should cause the core to harden. After an hour of being left in the bag with the CO2, the mould was opened. The core was a failure on two counts. Firstly, the CO2 hadn't penetrated all the way through the part, so the innermost sand hadn't hardened. And secondly, I somehow hadn't noticed there was a slight undercut on the edge of the mould due to the 3D printing, which gripped into the core and tore it apart when the mould was separated. As an experiment, I decided to give sand casting a whirl anyway without the core. Next time, I'm going to change the design of the core mould to allow for easier separation and more penetration of the carbon dioxide. I'll also use welding gas as a source of the CO2. The bottom part of the sand mould, or flask, is called the drag. Half of the pattern is placed inside the drag and covered in talcum powder so the sand doesn't stick to it. The casting sand is then added. The particular sand I used is called Man's Bond Oil Sand and it's not cheap. It's very similar to Petra Bond which is commonly used in other YouTubers casting videos. The sand is impregnated with an oil that allows it to hold its shape. The sand is rammed in around the part until the drag is filled to the top. I didn't realise how unbelievably time consuming it is to ram up a flask. The 
sand is then leveled or struck off to allow the mould to sit on a flat surface. Once the first half of the mould has been cleaned up, it's time to add the other half of the pattern. In retrospect, I should have made the pattern such that it held itself together without needing to be glued, as it means I will need to use a scalpel to cut the two halves apart if I want to use them again. The completed pattern and lower half of the mould are dusted with more talcum powder so that the two halves can be separated. Then the top half of the flask, the cope, is slid in place. I didn't video making the flask as there are plenty of videos on YouTube about that, but the key thing is that there is some way of making the two halves line up. The cope was rammed up with more sand. I forgot at the time but I really should have put in place some runners and risers to pack the sand around. Instead, I ended up needing to cut them out of the sand later. Once the two halves of the flask were rammed up, it was time to separate them and remove the pattern. It's not a problem that some of the sand broke away, this just means there could be more excess metal to remove. You can always take away metal after it's been cast, but you can't add it. Tapping the pattern helps loosen it from the sand. Now to cut out the in gate, the runner and the riser. This arrangement was partly inspired by one of my favourite metal casting YouTubers, Paul of Paul's Garage, link in the description below. He has been experimenting with techniques to improve his castings. One of Paul's ideas I'm vaguely trying to copy here is to have the aluminium flow past the gate for the part into some form of spin trap to stop the liquid metal bouncing back into the part. The metal initially is full of bubbles and loose sand and this gets pushed straight past the part into the spin trap, leaving the cleaner less turbulent metal to overspill and fill the part. A vent is drilled into the top of the part and any loose sand is blown away. The two halves of the flask can then be reassembled. Next I'm making an extension for the in gate. The idea is that the metal is poured in, it is under pressure from the weight of the metal further up and this drives it into all of the gaps, hopefully pushing the air out. Notice that the hole is not cut in the centre, instead it is offset and I have carved a small pit into the area next to the hole. 
This was again an idea copied from Paul of Paul's Garage. The metal was poured directly into the small pit where any bubbles should rise to the surface and then the metal wave spills and falls down the hole towards the part. This reduces the distance the metal has to fall from when it leaves the crucible, reducing turbulence and also helps bring some of the trap bubbles to the surface before the metal enters the mould. Here I'm placing a nickel tube in place where the core should go so I can hopefully hammer it out after the aluminium has cooled. The mould is ready for casting. The crucible was charged with some of the ladder pieces. It also still contains some metal from the fire extinguishers melted in the previous video. Starting the furnace is a bit fiddly, trying to get decent airflow from the hairdryer. Notice the KO wall on the lid has already started to perish from the heat and is barely staying attached. I don't know how I didn't melt my camera lens getting these close shots. As it was starting to get dark by this point you can really see the heat radiating from the crucible and the end of the blowtorch. The dross was skimmed and the metal was ready to pour. This time I made sure I placed the crucible in the pouring hoop at the correct angle and that I had plenty of room around the sand mould. Here you can see I'm not pouring the metal directly down the hole, rather I'm pouring it into the pit and it is overflowing into the mould. I'm trying to make sure I pour fast enough to not get any big air bubbles in the mould. I'm not sure whether metal came out of the small vent but not of the bigger hole to the side. Maybe it pushed some sand into the spin trap and this blocked the metal from flowing.
my first attempt at metal casting. All I can do is wait until the morning and find out how it went. The next day and it's time to demold. The oil in the sand burns at high temperatures so any burn bits of sand are not usable again. Here I'm carefully separating the good sand from the bad sand. Initially it looks promising. Once finally dug out we can see that the casting has failed as it has shrunk at the top of the sphere. I tried hammering out a nickel tube but it was totally stuck fast. So this is the surface finish. Need a big riser on there, so it's shrunk. Just for curiosity's sake, I thought I would quickly clean up the surface to get an idea as to what kind of finish would have been achievable. Buffs out mostly okay, smooth, but these are quite big mould lines, so they'll need to be filled out on the actual pattern. I think I'll just chuck some car body filler over that and sand it smooth. That's where I hammered, tried hammering the tube out. So I fail, but I fail with promise. Right, let's quickly whiz through melting the rest of the ladder. Oh look, cot stuff. Yada yada yada. Thank you. 
Right, done. Right, that's us all caught up. In the next few videos, I'll be making some actual parts. If you enjoyed the video thank you for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And, I'll see you in the next one.